Hi, this is Andy Fuchs, and I'm going to just give you a brief demonstration of how we bias any of our ODS amplifiers. Basically, uh, you can purchase a meter and a set of alligator clip leads at any electronic supply shop like a Radio Shack or purchase them online. Uh, if you don't know where, you can contact our office uh, tech support and we'll advise you uh, with some online links where you can purchase the proper equipment. Basically, what I have here is I've connected a ground connection to the chassis ground using a clip lead, and that's going to my negative meter probe. Uh, my positive meter probe is connected currently to one power tube through a clip lead, and the second power tube is also on a clip lead. That allows me to be constantly connected to the two points I need to measure without having to use two hands inside the chassis for safety reasons. Uh, the amplifier is currently in standby. I have a probe connected to pin 8 of each power tube. Now this will be true of an ODS-50, an ODS-100, and an ODS-150, as well as most of our mods. Um, the bias controls are located on the motherboard. Um, in some cases it's a single turn pot. In many cases in the current amps, probably for the last five years or so, it has been a multi-turn pot, which is 10 turns from one end of rotation to the other. Basic concept is you're going to set the amplifier to produce 36 millivolts for a 6L6. <clears throat> there are other voltages for other power tubes, which you should check either the manual or check with the factory. But since most amps are 6L6s, I can tell you 36 millivolts is the bogey point. Um, all the controls on the front panel should be at zero. You should have a speaker plugged in just for safety purposes so the amp has a load on it. This amp is on and in standby. If I come out of standby, You'll notice my meter is now <clears throat> showing 31 MA for one power tube. Uh, I'm going to take my probe here and I'm going to switch it over and measure the other power tube. Uh, the other power tube is 32. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this trimmer right here, make a slight turn. And now I'm at 36 MA for that tube. I'll go back to the other tube. Now you'll notice I can kind of freely work here. The, the voltages that I'm measuring are not dangerous, so even if I were to touch this probe, I wouldn't get a shock. And I don't have to deal with any high voltages inside the chassis that would be of any kind of a risk. Now this tube was a little higher before it was 33. It's now gone down a little because the tubes do borrow from one another. So now I'm going to take this to 36 MA and I'm going to go back to the other tube just to make sure. And that's also a 36 MA. Now I am properly biased. Um, another good thing to check while doing this is uh, make sure your AC power line is at the proper voltage, you know, the average voltage for your area. If you measure AC volts, you can measure right across the power socket. The two outer pins uh, should give you 120 or 240 or whatever, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, the bias voltage does not change, and what you're measuring is DC volts, 36 millivolts, and you should use a digital meter uh, because most analog meters will not pick that up. Um, but the good part is you can purchase the proper meter. Um, the meter and the test leads combine probably for about $30 to $40, um, which is significantly less than the many bias meters that people sell. And you can't use a bias meter on these amps anyway uh, because they've got a one-ohm resistor on each power tube cathode, which gives you the test point to measure with a proper meter instead of using <clears throat> an outboard testing device. So that's basically how you do it. Um, and any questions, you can email us at techsupport at fuchsaudio.com. Have a great day.